stainless steel crowns in pediatric dentistry. Crown is the restoration that stimulates the anatomy, the morphology and the functionality of the clinical crown. Now, earlier it was believed that primary tooth are of no importance in the oral cavity, but in fact, they hold a wide variety or a wide range of importance. That is, they help in chewing and nutrition, then they also help in adding on space for the permanent dentition, they help in maintenance of facial aesthetics, the mastication and the speech development. The various restorations which can be used for the permanent teeth are silver amalgam restoration, the glass animal cements, composite restorations and the semi-permanent restoration. Stainless steel crowns are also semi-permanent restorations. The stainless steel crown was first discovered or proposed by Sir William Humphrey in the year 1950 and the technique of the fabrication was discovered by Dr. Mink. Now they are used more frequently in deciduous dentition because they are relatively smaller than the permanent dentition, the pulp chamber is relatively larger and the progression of caries is very fast destroying the integrity of the crown much more faster than the larger permanent teeth. The major advantages of the stainless steel crown over amalgam restoration is that they have more retention and resistant towards the fracture and they are more acceptable by both the patient as well as the dentist. Further, they are also cost effective. The main objectives of the stainless steel crown and the oral cavity is that they are biologically acceptable and clinically also acceptable and they also form the better masticatory component. Now what are the indications of these crowns in teeth? In the case of extent, extensive tooth decay, for example, if more than two to three surfaces of a tooth are involved, it will be restored by, better by a stainless steel crown. In the case of rampant caries, if more than three to four teeth are involved to those surfaces which are rather immune to decay, stainless steel crowns can be used. Then following pulpectomy or pulpotomy in primary teeth, Stainless steel are, crowns are the ideal restorations. As a preventive restoration in handicapped children who cannot maintain their oral hygiene properly and also in the case of recurrent caries and the restorations. In the case of developmental defects of teeth like hypoplastic teeth, amylogenesis or dentinogenesis imperfecta in which the teeth are more prone to fracture. As an abutment in the processes in the dental construction and in the case of crown and loop space maintainers. They can also be used as a temporary restoration or intermediate restorations for fractured teeth. In the case of fractured amalgam fillings or the fractured primary or permanent teeth. In the case of bruxism, when, when the occlusion forces are high, stainless steel crown provides better occlusion wear resistance. The particular contraindications for the stainless steel crowns are in the case of permanent teeth when the margins cannot be restored properly by the means of stainless steel crown. So other crowns like PFM crowns are preferred. Now in the case when the deciduous teeth roots are resolved more than half, uh, that, that, case, that case also stainless steel crowns are not indicated, that is they are contraindicated. Now the composition of the stainless steel crown, they comprise mainly of nickel, chromium, iron and other minor elements. The 18-8 stainless steel crown is also known as the nickel chromium alloy crown in which the chromium percentage is 18% and that of nickel is 8% by weight. The strength of stainless steel crown is quite high that it is 211 to 1760 megapascals. It is available in six sizes in which four and six is the majorly used size. Now coming over to the classification of these crowns, they can be further divided into untrimmed. These are the more crudest form of the stainless steel crowns which require a lot of trimming and contouring for the adaptation. The example of such type of crown is Rocky Mountain. Then pre-trimmed crown, they are pre-trimmed uh, from the company itself. They are unitic crowns. And pre-contoured crowns are trimmed as well as contoured. For example, iron crown. There are various armatariums which are required for the fabrication, 
and the application of the crown. They can be burrs and stones and pliers. Number round burr, then straight fissure burr, 169 L burr, number 6 and number 8 burr, green stone and heatless stones are required for the armatorium of the burrs and stones. In pliers, the contouring pliers, Johnson's pliers, the crimping pliers, the hoe pliers and the Gordon pearl pliers are required as armatorium. Their various polishing instruments are the green stones, the polishing wheel, the raw and the dental floss. So coming over the various steps of the fabrication and the cementation of crown, this first and the foremost step is the application of local anesthesia. This will avoid any discomfort to the patient while the manipulation of minor gingival tissue. Then further rubber dam application is done, the placement of wedges for the tooth separators so that there is no harm to the adjacent tooth while the tooth cutting. Then first and the foremost step for the tooth reduction is occlusal reduction which is about 1.5 to 2 mm. The overall reduction of the cusp, the marginal ridges, the inclines and the grooves is done. It should be followed by the means of depth cutting grooves. These are defined as the guiding grooves for the reduction. The original contour should be maintained. The occlusal reduction can be done either by a carbide burr or a diamond burr. It can be the diamond burr is used to reduce the cusps and the carbide burr are used to reduce the cuspal tips, the slopes and the grooves. And finally the tooth is out of occlusion. The measured, uh, it can be measured from the adjacent teeth that is the height should be reduced by about 1.5 to 2 mm and this can be finally checked by placement of a wax sheet in between the teeth though no marks should be left on the wax sheet. Then coming to the proximal reduction. After the occlusal reduction, proximal reduction is done by the means of the tapered diamond cutting burr. This is 169 L burr. Then sufficient clearance with the adjacent teeth should be there. The proximal reduction should be started from buccally to lingually. And finally, there is a complete slice between the buccal lingual aspect of the tooth should be there. Then the mesodustal reduction. This step does not exist. For example, there is an ample clearance of the crown in this step. Then the buccal and the lingual reduction should not be done because the they should be present, the undercut should be present for final seating of the crown and better resistance to the dislodgement. There is another school of thought which says that the buccal reduction can be done by 0.5 mm. Then finally finishing uh, of the crown preparation can be done by removal of any remaining caries, from completion of the pulp therapy, any beveling of the line angles or the point angles and reduction, reduction or removal of any ledges. Finally we will evaluate the tooth preparation that is occlusal clearance, clearance should be done, it should be free from any ledges and the proximal contour should be fine. Bacolingual contour, bacolingual convergence should be present, all the point angles should be rounded and the feather edge or the knife edge should be present at the gingival side. Now after the reduction of the cusp and reduction of the tooth, the crown selection should be done. The crown selection is done by measuring the crown mesiodistally, the occlusal height, then the height of the occlusal crown should be measured the primate space and the gingival contour, the gingival marginal contour is considered. Now coming over to the crown adaptation or the adaptation of the crown. The trial fit of the crown is done from buccal, from the lingual to the buccal as aspect. It is rotated. Finally, the crown is adjusted by the means of greenstone. All the margins or the rough margins are smoothened. The contouring of the crown is done at the middle aspect or the middle one third of the crown for proper bell shaped appearance of the crown and proper fitting. Crimping is done by the means of crimping plier with the help of walking technique on the cervical one third of the crown. 
the, this aid in mechanical retention of the crown and the tooth and also helps to preserve the gingival health. The final finishing of the crown can be done by the means of green stone, the rubber bead or the rock and the luster can be attained by polishing with a fine polishing APF paste or the polishing material. Finally, the cementation of the crown is done by the means of zinc phosphate, polypar carboxylate, reinforced zinc oxide eugenol or the luting consistency of glass anima cement. The cementation should be done on a dry clean isolated tube. No contamination of saliva or any water should be done. And crown is filled either half to two thirds and the cement is mixed in luting consistency. The crown is cemented from lingual to buccal side and the patient is asked to bite in centric occlusion. All the excess cement or the flush material, flush of the cement should be removed by the means of fine pointed explorer and the final check of restoration for occlusion should be done. The fining polishing of the crown can be done by a polishing material. The completed restoration should be checked for the occlusal surface, the occlusal preparation, any excess cement, the natural bulge, the gingival margin contour and adaptation of the crown to the undercut. Now there are certain modifications for the stainless steel crowns. These can be in the case when the adjacent stainless steel crowns are used. Both the crowns should be prepared at the same time but they should be cemented one at a time. The stainless steel crown in the case of space loss. In the case of space loss, if there is space loss due to proximal caries, two stainless steel crowns can be used or a crown can be used and it is slightly rotated mesiobuccally so that it will be out of the arch. The surfaces can be flattened or the crown can be squeezed by the means of Adam's plier. In the case of oversized crown, for example, if the size of the crown is larger than that of the tooth, here we can cut the crown and up to the middle by the means of a crown cutting scissors and it can be further soldered to decrease the size of the crown and can be adapted on the tooth. In the case of undersized crown, that is, if the size of the tooth preparation is larger than that of the crown, again we have to make a V-shaped cut in the crown and we can solder a band material in the empty space so the so as we can make the crown larger and finally cement and adapt it in the case of deep subgingival caries another orthodontic brand band can be applied to the point where the gingival caries are present and we can solder it and finally cement it in the case of bruxism where excessive occlusal forces are occur they occur so we can increase the thickness of the metal on the occlusal surface of the crown again by the means of soldering then open faceted crowns what are these crowns sometimes the patient may complain of the appearance that is the metallic appearance of the crown which may look ugly so the labial window can be cut out from the crown label surface of the crown or the buccal surface of the crown which can be further restored by resin veneering in the case of ectopic eruption, we can be applied to permanent first molar to hold a type of ectopic eruption. Then anterior stainless steel crown. In the case when there are multiple caries or more than two surfaces are lost in the primary teeth, in the case of class 3 type of caries, this stainless steel crowns can be used. In permanent incisors, they can be also used as a material for holding a temporary dressing. Now there are certain complications which can occur due to the fabrication of the crown. First is the interproximal ledge, the crown tilt, poor marginal adaptation and sometimes there may be even inhalation of the crown by the patient. How can these be prevented and how do this, these uh, processes happen? In the case of interproximal ledge, sometimes due to the incorrect angulation of the tapered fissure bar when, while cutting the proximal uh, margins of the crown, the proximal ledge can occur. So the failure to remove the ledge will lead to inability for the crown to be seated. 
The placement, the crown tilt can be prevented by placement of the amalgam alloy or glassanomer restoration prior to any crowning. Poor marginal ridges of the crown will lead to recurrent caries, the case of gingivitis or plaque retention, poor oral hygiene also. Sometimes, if due to sudden unpredictable movements of the patient, the crown may be ingested. This can be prevented by the means of proper rubber band placement. If this happens, the child should be immediately put upside down and the chest x-ray should be taken. Further, any bronchoscopy if required is done. The crown may pass uneventfully within 5 to 10 days. There are certain instructions which should be given to the patient after placement and cementation of the crown is to avoid any sticky food, avoid chewing of hard candies, corn kernels or any caramel toffee, then to maintain the oral hygiene properly and to prevent from touching the crown again and again. So finally, there are no restoration which have been so flexible like the use of stainless steel crown in dentistry and it is an ideal restoration for the use in primary teeth. Thank you.